the Missouri Valley Conference. No strangers to elite competition. They knocked off an SEC foe five years ago against Mississippi State. They come in eight and one, Florida five and two. Gators in white, Loyola in maroon. We're underway here in Gainesville. You see the starting five of the lineup changes for Florida. One of those is this man right here, Stone getting the start. And a sophomore out of Deerfield Beach, Florida, gets his first basket. Unlike against Florida State, that's where Florida does have an advantage is their size down low on the interior. Loyola coming in shooting 52% from the field. That's the eighth best mark in America. Jackson lines up an open three. Did we mention they can shoot? That's Andre Jackson, preseason first team, all Missouri Valley. Mike White can't be happy. He knew they had to take away the three. They had a tough defensive practice yesterday to execute, not execute on the first possession. Has him frustrated. They shoot 52 from the field and 42 from three. Pull up jumper from 15 is true. That is DeAndre Ballard, a very talented freshman out of Atlanta. He was the one bright spot in that loss against Florida State. He was ready to play. The rest of his teammates weren't. Chioza guarding Custer up top. Backdoor cut and poked away and stolen away by Ballard. Chioza sets up Stone down low to Hayes. Hayes backing in. Sets up that left-handed half-hook shot. Missed it, but got his own rebound before throwing it away. Here's Custer. Nice pass to the streaking big man, and finishing it is Cameron Crutwig, a 6'9 freshman. He is so skilled for a freshman. They operate a lot of offense through him. He's like having a point center. We've heard of point forwards. He is a point center for this Loyola team. Igor Kulichev, the transfer out of Rice who at times has shown tremendous prowess from three-point range. Almost another, it is another turnover on Florida. Gators had 17 of them in the loss against Florida State. That did not please Mike White any. Guster around the screen. Gets it on the return with 12 to shoot. Stone picks him up out deep. Lob pass inside and too high that time for Crutwig. You mentioned Mike White now in his third year as the Florida Gator head coach, of course, replacing the legendary Billy Donovan. And for the Gators, Dane Bradshaw, a couple of things that they have to do well to win tonight. When you're a high scoring team, you can't allow your offense to dictate your defensive intensity. Just because you're not making shots doesn't allow you to sulk on the defense end. And what Mike White is looking for, they must win the toughness battle. If they can out-tough and match the toughness of Loyola, there's no reason they should not win this game. Chris Chios is going to have to be a little more tough with that handle. Pretty loose on another turnover. Guster on a deep three straight away. And Kulichuk tears away the rebound. Chioza dribbling between the trees and now draws a bump foul. 16.49 ago, one-point game, and here is Porter Moser in his seventh year. He's really an impressive guy when you talk to him, as we had a chance to do this morning. Really got his tutelage under former legendary coach Rick Majerus. Worked with Rick back when he was at St. Louis. This is his third head coaching stint and has done a fine job at Loyola. And if they're going to have a chance to win this game, they must get back in transition. Kulichev, good look, just a little bit too strong. The Gators had turned it over their last three possessions before that shot. This is another key. Controlling tempo. Make Florida work. Go late into the shot clock. If you get an up-tempo game, that's when it makes it even tougher on your transition, transition defense. That the two is, go hand in hand. That is what Loyola does so well. Another open three. Andre Jackson. Who came in shooting 56% from downtown and 67% from the field. And if you think that's a fluke, he was fourth in the nation as a Juco player last year in field goal percentage. Goes all the way back to his high school days. I mean, the guy has never shot less than 60% from the field. That's unheard of. And now he's added range to that arsenal. Shot clock down to five. Strong take by Gack. Missed it. 
And coming away at the offensive rebound is Stone, but a whistle. And that'll be a foul on Florida. You can't go under when you have shooters. Hand down, man down. Loyola, up early. It's going to get on the players. And Chris Chioza, it starts at the point guard position. You're the senior. You're the captain. You're the leader at the point guard spot. But here's the challenge, Mike. If it's not in somebody's DNA, if it's not in them to be the vocal leader, you can't force that on them. Because then they'll be out of their comfort zone. It won't be credible because the teammates know that's outside of their personality. And like it or not, you might just have to live with it. Kentucky's got the same issue right now where John Calipari, admittedly, he's the vocal leader because other guys haven't gotten comfortable in that role. There's for a different reason because they're young guys still learning before they can call each other out. But it's, it's a problem amongst a lot of teams. That's going to be a goal 10 and another bucket for Jackson, who already has eight points now, two threes and that deuce. And, and Dane, that's a, a great point just to pick up on it. You can't change sometimes your DNA. If you're not naturally a leader, it's pretty hard to fake it. And sometimes teams just have to work without it. Well, and if you got a guy like Kulichov who has some of that in him, the other challenge is, well, how long has he been with the team? Not even a year. And so sometimes that type of guy is not comfortable stepping up yet where he doesn't feel like it's his team. But it's not about whose team it is. It's about doing the right thing and holding your teammates accountable at the given moment. And again, Mike White was quick to point out to us today at shoot around. It's not that they're bad kids. He loves the attitude of these guys, just not necessarily vocal leaders. Nice play there by the somewhat silent Allen on the dish to Kulichek. Downs finds Crutwick. Now here's Ingram. Baseline jumper on the way, and it's true for Lucas Williams. He's a 6'4 freshman out of Chicago, and again, this team could flat out shoot, but they didn't get back in time as Gap streaking to the basket gets the layup. Well, that's inexcusable for Loyola. You know they're tough in transition. You can't get beat back on a made basket. Four-point game as we near the 14-minute mark. This man is hot. This man keeps hitting 11 early points for Jackson, who is now 13 for 21 on the season on three-point shooting. A guy that was under the weather earlier today. I, I'm not seeing any effects. <laughs> Give me some of what he's taking. That quiets the crowd. A seven-point lead for Loyola. Again, they come in eight and one. This is not a team that is intimidated or lacking confidence. Chioza with six. Going to have to make something happen quickly. Three. Desperation heave rims off. And a rebound. Reeled in by Crutwig. Lyola keeps getting good looks. Kick basketball. With 22 on the shot clock. Another open three look here at Andre Jackson. Look, sometimes when you're playing a mid-major team, you don't believe the coaches when they're hyping the other team up. Hey, this guy can shoot. You're going to get beat if this happens until they come out and get you with that first punch. And so the concern is, wait a minute, Florida State gave the Gators the first punch, the second and the third, as Mike White put it. And now Loyola is doing the same thing in back-to-back -back games. The Ramblers have hit six of the first seven shots. Custer wheels and deals. That's not really his game. Offensive rebound, though, and the stick back is good by Avery plus the foul. And that's inexcusable for Florida, a much bigger team to get beaten on the offensive glass. It's got to be so frustrating for Coach White. I mean, I, I thought this was a bad decision by Custer. He had an open Jackson on the wing, but he gets bailed out by his teammate. And look, it, it looks like there's effort there by Hudson and the bigs, but you're just jumping straight up. Nobody put a body on anybody. It's not crashing the board isn't about jumping to go get it. It's about putting your butt on somebody, boxing them out, and securing the board. And that look from Mike White tells the story right now as he's watching his Gator team that has lost two in a row, down by 10 to Iola. By the Missouri Valley Conference, Stone misses the layup. Well, Dana, I always like to say not all mid-majors are built the same. When this game was scheduled, this was not a gimme. This is not a cupcake. A lot of people think Loyola could actually win the Missouri Valley this year. Remember, no Wichita State in that conference. They're in the American. Another offensive rebound stick back for Avery. How about Avery's Avery start to the season? I mean, he plays his first game after coming back from an injury last game. 
He puts up seven points in 12 minutes, and he is coming in and picking up where he left off. Then a huge spark to this Loyola team offensively. 20 to eight, the score here in half number one. Stone on another drive, and that time the seed parted for the sophomore from Deerfield Beach. That's difficult. At times you're gonna be switching ball screens, but then when it's just an exchange like that, you must communicate. Are you switching? Are you staying with your man? Talk your action. Custer trying to find some space. Here's the hot hand. Strong take. Are you kidding me? Andre Jackson, the 6'5 senior, with 13 points. We haven't even played 10 minutes. And an answer on the other end by Jalen Hudson. And that's a young man, a transfer from Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech that has been a very welcomed addition to the Gators. He's a scorer, like a lot of guys on their team, but that's the problem is they assume they can get it back on the offensive end instead of winning games on the defensive side. Custer from the baseline. Got it with six on the shot clock. They are absolutely igniting right now on all cylinders. They've hit 10 of 13 shots, and the Ramblers up 12. We'll continue to make more and more progress, and hopefully you folks will do your part as well. And obviously it helps to have family, but it also helps to have your Florida family. And Coach Mike White was the first to visit outside of the immediate family to come support the Collettes. Gators a little bit stung in the early going. Tough shot there by Allen. Could not finish with the left hand. Loyola shooting lights out. 10 of 13 from the field. Collette off a curl. Backing in on Allen. And a reach-in foul on Kayvon Allen with 13 on the shot clock. Loyola has such great half-court sets. They send guys back door. You're constantly having to move as the defender, and it allows the offense to really dictate how the game is going. Let them be the aggressor. Right now, Florida's scrambling all over the place. They don't look like they're pressed up on anybody. They're too busy trying to figure out what man they are. 14-footer rims off, rebound Kulichek. Gioza. Bounce pass along the baseline and sets up Hayes. Ten point game. What does Florida do better defensively? Because so far we haven't seen much. Well, I think they have to press up on the ball and take more pride in your one on one defense, but there's a lot of mismatches out there. And I think part of that has been the different lineups that Coach White has tried to use. There's another open look, and Dante Ingram buries a three. Now 11 of 15 from the field. Bulichoff that time with a force. Probably not the shot that Mike White wants to see out of his sharpshooter. Coach Moser coming from that Rick Majerus coaching tree. They love to find and recruit mismatch, right? And they have a bunch of those right now. And honestly, right now, with Kulichov at the three, I think Florida's too big. Yeah. I think they'd be better suited with Kulichov at the four, possibly even the five, because this is a small mid-major team that can play small ball with the best of them. Very rare miss by the Ramblers. Kulichov, kick out pass Allen. To Hayes in the paint, no. Rebound to Iowa. Top of everything else, this incredible torrid start to the game from the field for the Ramblers has taken this Florida crowd out of the game a little bit. Shot clock under 10. Custer again around the screen. Probes the right side. Skip pass. Look at the ball movement. And Ingram would have been better suited to just fire that open three. Instead, he walks. On Saturday, we'll have a college hoops doubleheader for you on the SEC Network. Arkansas battles number 14, Minnesota at 6.45 Eastern time. And then at 9, it's Missouri taking on Green Bay. I've had Mizzou a few times in the early going. They are just fine without Michael Porter. Very talented team. And, of course, Arkansas trying to make it back to the NCAA tournament. Jalen Barford was part of that 
run to the NCAA tournament last year. They got a couple of seniors leading the way. Arkansas looks to be in good shape again this year. Yeah, the Razorbacks took one on the chin against Houston, though, and they're looking to bounce back with a tough Minnesota team that beat Alabama, albeit five on three. <laughs> but they managed to, as Alabama guys get hurt, foul out, ejected. One of the classic pictures you'll ever see. Five on three to finish the last, what, 11 minutes of the game? To, to quote Norman Dale, my team is on the floor. And that's what Avery Johnson had going <laughs> that particular night. Are you with me? The SEC appears to be the deepest it's been in about 10 years. Oh, no, no question. And the quality of the depth. I mean, just look at Tennessee right now. Picked to finish 13th in the league and then the top 25. A whistle down low and Florida will go to the free throw line. They haven't had many trips to the line. In fact, that's only the second foul of the half on Loyola. Loyola has done a really nice job of one limiting Florida to one shot and cleaning up the defensive rebound. But two, when Florida has gone at the rim, it's been contested tough twos. They've been able to get in the paint at times, but not convert at a high level. Now how about this for a number on Florida? They've had 20 possessions. 13 of them have been empty, i.e. no points. And that's not what you expect out of a Mike White coach team. Again, this is a, a team that was scoring 100 points plus at a regular clip in the early part of the year. Top 10 in the country in scoring. Top 10 of the assist to turnover ratio. I mean, at times when they're clicking, they look like a runaway locomotive. But the last couple of games, they have struggled a little bit. It goes back to one of our keys to the game. You can't allow your offensive efficiency to have an impact on your defensive intensity, and that's happening right now. Okay, I'm mad, I'm not making shots, I'm down. Well, you know what you should do as a player? If I'm not making shots today, guess what, opponent? You're not making them either, right? And that's how we're gonna win this game. But right now, I think Florida, too many individuals right now caught up in their own individual performance and not being tough enough on the de defensive side of the ball. And to Mike White's credit, he said, look, even at the PK-80, I was telling media and everybody else this, we struggle defensively right now with toughness, despite how well they played on the offensive end out there. And as Porter Moser just got a coaching box warning. Remember, that extended it this year from 28 feet to 38 feet. He might want another five feet of real estate. There's a steal. Chioza full throttle. Chioza all the way to the rack. And now Florida trying to speed up Loyola. Kick out pass. And a bump foul. As Towns got bumped on the play. One way to get transition buckets, great turnovers. Little man, big finish, Chris Chioza. Memphis, Tennessee, White Station. It's the bigger issue for Mike White. We keep beating it to death, but it's there's no resistance at all in the defensive end. And against the Loyola team that can execute you to death and cut you up like a surgeon with their point guard and their back cuts, if you aren't locked in defensively, you can get run out of the gym. They have been surgical thus far. It's been a while since I've seen a team Hit 11 of its first 17 shots and four or five from three to start a game on the road against a top 10 Florida team. I will say I like the adjustment Mike White's making right now. He's starting to go to the press. You saw a lot of pressure even on that under out of bounds, and here he is again. I think this allows his team to be the aggressor. They were on their heels defensively in the half court, like I said, with those back cuts and just trying to figure out where are we switching, where are we not. Now this could help them speed up the tempo the way Coach Moser did not want them to do. They pause to adjust the shot clock to the proper time. It's at 17 now, and Florida goes full court, man to man. And trouble getting the ball in. Finally comes in to Jackson. Custer, the former Iowa State Cyclone, brings the ball across the timeline. I like this ball pressure. Baccioza make it uncomfortable for the opponent. And a bad foul there by Akaru, the freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina, with just three on the shot clock. Florida plays great defense for 27 seconds, and then you foul. Freshman mistake there, and that's why Kayvon Allen's coming into the game. One of the new rules in college basketball, foul on the front court, the shot clock resets to 20. Not 30, not a full reset like it used to be. A rule that I think most people like. Strong 
take, and a rare miss that time by Jackson, but an offensive rebound for Loyola. Williamson. And stolen away by Allen. Allen off to the races. Allen thunders it home. Time out, Loyola. And Mike, they've gone to a smaller lineup the Florida Gators have. We talked about it before. They were playing too big of a lineup. Right now it's four guards. Yes, you may give up some size down low, but that allows you to speed the game up in your favor. Six turnover of the half for Loyola and leads to the dunk. Well, they missed an opportunity with Jackson on Chioza. Could have posted him up as a smaller guard, but then once it is, it's in Allen's hands. There's, there's no, no competition on this track meet with this type of athlete. Out Kayvon Allen going first team all Southeastern Conference a year ago. A great shooter throughout his career, but his numbers are down this year. He came in shooting just 37% for the field and 32 from three. Mike White has plenty to bark about. Mike White is not afraid to get into his team, as he told us today. Is I'm not worried about positive reinforcement. When my guys are not playing well, I'm going to tell them why and tell them it's got to be fixed. In a way to keep the locker room and keep the respect of your players, and he has no problems doing that. But I thought it was evidenced by the fact that he put Allen on the bench. I mean, this is the first time all SEC player, and it doesn't matter what your last name is or what kind of accolades you have. If you don't play with the intensity I want you to play with, somebody else is going to take your spot. And that's not a knock on Allen, but it's just a lesson to the entire team that Coach White is able to do when you have a superstar like Allen. I'm guessing as a former player, that would have gotten your attention, right? No question at all. And you play harder. Once you get benched, you have a whole new intensity to when you take that floor. Custer tries to get out of trouble. A runner. That's one of the few bad looks for Loyola. Chioza leaves it off for Hudson. And back out to the man they call Cheese on a three. Got it. This is where Custer has to manage the team. It's easy when things are clicking, but now the crowd's getting into it. Make good decisions and make jumpers. Smooth shot by Clayton Custer, the yeah, Iowa State it. transfer out of Overland Park, Kansas. He started now in 42 consecutive games. Tough shot, no. Hayes battling for the rebound. And a whistle and four foul. One way to get yourself open is simply have the defender lose balance. Chioza says, oh, I'm not going to drive. I can knock this down. But then Hudson comes down. I didn't like the shot he took. They have the green light on this Gator team. But just because you can make it doesn't necessarily mean you should take it. And Loyola was starting to get frazzled a little bit defensively. you got to make them work. And again, I keep hard on the lineup here. But I like this substitution. If you're going to take Hudson out, bring in another guy that can keep you small in the lineup, which Kula Charles can do. 15 foul on Florida, seven point game. A little more than five and a half to play in the first half. Custer being harassed, gets it back. And an illegal screen call that's been a point of emphasis in college basketball the last few years. Foul on Crutwig. Thursday, the SEC now team will have Dari, Peter, Marcus, Chris, and Gene. Their postseason special, the most wonderful time of the year, especially if you're playing in the postseason, which most SEC teams are. And I'm sure they'll talk about the new coach at Arkansas. Maybe by then they'll have a new coach at your alma mater, Tennessee. TikTok, I'm not holding my breath, man. <laughs> <laughs> but Phil Fuller, he's done as much as he could possibly do in his first few days. I think he's had plenty of interviews, and I won't be shocked if something comes very soon. It's been a turbulent time for coaches in college football, particularly in the Southeastern Conference. Speaking of college football, boy, we can't wait for this, right? I mean, Clemson, Alabama, Oklahoma, Georgia. Give it to me now. I can't wait. All starts on New Year's Day. I know I'll be on a couch somewhere. Good look that time for Allen. Can't connect. Left it short. And it's out of bounds off of Kulichov.
Baxter. To Towns. And had Custer on a backdoor cut. Good missed him. Instead, the big man takes it, and Hayes takes a couple of PSIs out of the basketball. You got it. Crutwood rarely misses an open man, but he did there, and then Hayes does a nice job of keeping that wall in the air, not bringing the hands down, avoids getting a foul. Get a quick shot here, five to shoot. Comes into Ingram, the lefty launches, and got it with two on the shot clock. Allen telegraphs the pass, Lyo on a steal. Six turnovers for Florida here, half number one, ten point game. Guster bleeding some clock. Ingram tries again. That time it grazes the rim. That will be Florida basketball. That last three point make by Ingram, though, I thought was just the ultimate equalizer with the three point line. Florida was starting to get a rhythm. You felt like they were starting to claw back a little bit, and then all that gets wiped away with one breakdown with only five seconds left on the shot clock. That's where Hayes, who gave up, it was contested, but. You got to know there's only a few seconds on the shot clock. Don't even give up an inch. Loyola five for seven overall from distance. Allen probes the left side, pull up, stop and pop, too strong. That's his shot ordinarily. Satterwhite into the game for Loyola. Towns drives it to Crutwig. Backing in on Gap, Fretwig, left hand of the hook shot, no. Here comes Chioza, behind the back pass, Kulich off on a three. Gator yeah, shooting just 37% here in the first half. And a whistle. Is that a 10 second call? A 10 second call. You don't see many of those. 309 to go. Wyola up by 10. Chicago, especially when you see what they've done here, but they're able to keep this trend. All of a sudden, they'll become the, the hunted instead of the hunter, as my guy Damon Fishback likes to say in studio <laughs> in the NBC. Now, again, when you come in shooting 52% from the field through nine games, that's not a fluke. That's, that's a number that's pretty strong, and they have continued that hot shooting so far in this first half. There's some hot shooting from Florida. An and one for Kulichov. Coach Moser told us if there was one matchup he was concerned about, it was Kulichov because it forces his bigs and guards. Guards got to be able to fight the post-up ability of them, but then if you put a big man on him, he'll take you outside and beat you off the dribble. Kulichov has been a heck of an addition to this Florida Gator team and a matchup nightmare for opponents. All Conference USA first team at Rice. Grad transfer and of course the recruitment of him. It's a fantastic story. Mike White basically called him up and said, hey, we've heard good things about you. Kulichov said, have you seen me play? Mike White had to pause for a second and say, I, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> I haven't seen a single highlight, but I hear good things and I will watch the tape. Kulichov says, call me back after you watch the tape. See if you still like me enough to offer the scholarship. He did. He offered, and here he is in Gainesville. The rest is history. You gotta love the mature answer from the guy. You gotta love the honesty from Coach White. They said they got the commitment when he visited them at Rice, and they met at a, at a tea shop. He wanted to meet for tea. And all of a sudden, Coach White said, oh, yeah, I love tea. Now, I didn't ask Coach White how much tea he had since that visit. That's but. right. Was that the black tea, the yeah. herbal variety, a <laughs> uh, little lemon? But how about how he found out Kulichov was available? Our own Jeff Goodman on Twitter. That's he right. saw it get announced and released and said, guys, make the call. Jeff Goodman gets the assist on that one. Foul on the play on Florida. And it is on Kulichov. Saturday, we'll have a college hoops doubleheader for you on the SEC Network. Arkansas battles 14th ranked Minnesota at 645. And then at 9, it's Missouri taking on Green Bay. Like you mentioned, you've called several Missouri games, but I, I'm impressed by the job Conzo Martin is doing. I mean, I expected them to take more of a dip than they have with Michael Porter Jr. being out of the lineup, most likely for the season. You're talking about possibly the number one pick in the NBA draft next year. 
And to be without him usually is a blow, but they have. Really? I'm going to step up to the challenge. I'm going to give you one of my most underrated players in the league, Kevin Perrier of Missouri. He is a really seasoned and polished guy. Tough shot. Misses for Hudson, but he was fouled. And he'll go to the free throw line for three free throws. You can contest, but just don't fall into the shooter. Give him a play to land. That is the second foul on Andre Jackson. Certainly do not want to lose him to foul trouble. As valuable as he's been, as good as he's been in this first half, 13 points already. Mike, this is such a critical two-minute stretch for Loyola. You've done as good of a job as coach could ask of you, but you have to stay solid. Don't allow any momentum to shift to Florida going into the locker room. Hudson checks in at 71% for the free throw line and splits the first two. And not surprisingly, Jackson will go to the bench with those two fouls, and he'll probably stay there for the remaining 150 of the half. How about Jackson? He loves these big-time games. I mean, in two games against Power 5 teams, he's averaging 19 points and six rebounds. Heck, he's almost got that already tonight. Well, 13 points in the first eight minutes. He has not scored since that point. The Gators, once again, going to ratchet up the defense here. Full court. by Stone. Now it's Custer. Downs probing and has it rejected. Second block for Hayes out of bounds. Well, they don't have their top rim protector in the lineup yet. But for the meantime, Cabarrus Hayes is doing the job. Yeah, that would be a double block when John McBoonu gets back. Missing him defensively as a locker room guy and also just a rim protector. And Bruno scheduled to be back near the end of January. One of the shot clock did not get it off. That'll be a violation. Great defense there by the Florida Gators. And coming down on his ankle, it looks like that would be bad news for Loyola. It's Clayton Custer, one of their top scorers. Uh, he's the toughest kid on the floor, and so if he starts pointing immediately towards it, you know it's serious for him. And when you ask Coach Mosier about Custer, the first words out of his mouth are a coach's dream. Mm -hmm. And as is so often the case, when a player leaves his feet and lands on another player's foot, that's when trouble happens. You just hope at this point it's a bad sprain and nothing more serious than that. You talked about what this young man means. This is a team full of a lot of intangibles in addition to talent. Seven guys on their roster won state titles. So the culture of that locker room and this team overall, they've got a winning persona if you will this is doing what he always does setting teammates up a normal play for him gets in the air but just unfortunate and he pointed to the bench right away and as we mentioned he's as tough as anybody you'll see on the court and from a game standpoint and strategy for Loyola I mean he's he's the heart and soul of this team he right. is an irreplaceable player so it's going to have to be by committee with this Loyola team. Yeah, now you've got to find some leadership somewhere else from the point guard spot. As Loyola shows a little zone here. This is what Florida State did much of the game, and Florida did not handle it well. Stone on a stick back. That's one of the toughest things to do when you do go zone is being able to box out and find your man within it. Florida State had the luxury of some big guys and long arms. Loyola does not. Three-point game, Florida again amping up the pressure. Seven a run now for the Gators. Avery launching a three, no. Tapped around and another offensive rebound for the Ramblers. Mike Hayes has to get that ball. Great kid, great attitude, great motor, but his production has to be better. Put a body on him, get cut with 
out of rebounding position. And again, he's your best rebound. Here's Allen and a little steal. Allen, wild shot, and he gets the bounce. Ramblers can play for the final shot. Three seconds, two seconds, a runner, and it goes. And a little bit of momentum, much needed for Loyola before the end of the half. Loyola led by 13 at the 10 minute mark before the Gators made a run. Kayvon Allen with that huge wingspan and crazy shots are good shots for Kayvon Allen. He can make a variety of them, but then disappointing for Mike White on the way out the door. Loyola is able to get a bucket at the last second. Three point game here is Gaines in Gainesville. It's going on the 17 7 run to end the first half. What do you expect out of the Gators in the second half to continue to turn this thing around? Well, keep applying pressure, especially at the point guard spot, because Loyola is now without Clayton Custer, their leader, their quarterback at the point guard spot. And so life without him is going to fall into the hands of Dante Ingram to run the show at point. And not a good first possession there with a nice block by the Gators. Chioza, a rather quiet first half. Really nobody for Florida heated up. Keith Stone, by the way, with six points. And this time, it is the very talented freshman who is not bashful about shooting. That's DeAndre Ballard. He's looking for it. As soon as it touches his hands, he's ready to let it go. 2,500 points score in high school. He's a playmaker for a reason. Ballard was a centerpiece of Mike White's recruiting class. He is a gutter. And this is where they've got to operate their offense, right there with Cutwood. I mean, good things happen when they feed the post down low. But Ballard, the talented freshman, coming off his best game in his young Florida Gator career against Florida State, as we mentioned earlier, He's a guy that Coach White could point to. I mean, he had eight points, nine rebounds in 21 minutes against Florida State. There's, there's not another player on Florida that was able to rebound the way he does in that type of limited action. 2,500 points in his high school career out of Atlanta, Georgia. DeAndre Ballard. Crutwick. He gets the friendly bounce. And the lead is back to three for Loyola, who has led this game for most of the way. And Mike, again, we talked on it in the first half. Krutwig is really like a point center. And he's not a guy that's going to bring the ball up the court. But if you can get it in his hands in the high post, he's going to be relied on even more with Custer being out of the game as the primary ball handler. Opening up with that zone to try to slow things down, which Florida struggled with against the Seminoles last game. They really did. 17 turnovers against the Seminoles, and the worst shooting performance of the year by far. Towns. Shot clock now down to eight. Ball screen, shot clock at three. Desperation heat by Satellite runs off. And the rebound chased down by Chioza. Nice pass down low to Stone. Threads the needle on that dunk. Eight points now to lead the way for the Gators for Keith Stone. Usually Chioza loves that pitch back three with guys circling up. The whole defense shifted that direction. Good interior pass, another paint touch for Krutwig, and he knows what to do with it. It's the first meeting between these two schools. Stone backing in, goes to work, throws up a little jumper, no. Tapped around, Chioza reels it in. Chioza from 14 will draw a trip to the free throw line. Chioza is such a great passer. When he gets into the lane, he loves to pitch back to the shooter, but as the defense is focused on the shooter, there's Keith Stone sneaking in on the baseline. If you'll move when Chioza has the ball, he will find you every time. One of the
of the best point guards in the Southeastern Conference, the senior product out of Memphis, Tennessee, Chris Chioza, always one of the league's leaders in assist to turnover ratio. A Dane Bradshaw stat, if you ever watch one. I remember a young Dane Bradshaw leading this SEC in assist to turnover ratio. Everybody remembers who led the league in, S in assist to turnover ratio 10 years ago. Everybody, if your name's Mike Morgan. That's please. right. I, or Mike or Linda Bradshaw, <laughs> mom and dad are listening. Thank you. I filed that away, yeah. me and the entire Bradshaw family. But I tell you, Mike, what she owes when people talk about what they like and don't like about the one and done rule, many times they say, hey, I miss the four year guy, I've seen a guy fooled every year. They're talking about Chris Chioza. I mean, he's the guy that's gotten better every single year. He's built a rapport with the fan base. Gets to know, you get to know the player. And he has done a phenomenal job again coming from my same alma mater, White Station High School out of Memphis. Not necessarily the highest recruited player in the country. But a guy that anybody in the country would want to have running their ball club right now. And Fallis whistled on Hayes, his second foul on the floor. Here's Hayes on a steal. Hayes on a breakaway. Drops the hammer right on the head of Adarius Avery. And this is Florida's first lead since four to three. Skip pass sets up a three from the wing. Rims off, offensive rebound. Got it. How about the play of Cameron Crutwig, the 6'9 freshman? Eight points for Crutwig. That is what irritates Mike White in a nutshell. Big time play on one end. You got him on the ropes, and then you give up an offensive rebound down low to a guy that you just should have boxed out in the first place. And Hayes gives a brilliant play on one end, but too many missed box outs. And then Crutwig on the defensive end. Reels in another rebound. Nice action, nice pass down low, and it leads to an easy basket for Andre Jackson. Really nice read and recognition by Loyola. Jackson knew he had the mismatch. Chioza really did a nice job fronting the post, but mouse in the house. Go to work, big man. Mike White not waiting for the media timeout. Unhappy with the team's defense, but certainly happy with Kavaris Hayes on the steal and the slam. The pass to facilitate the offense. Really nice pass by the big man. And again, nice recognition by Jackson to post up the smaller guard. 8.7 rebounds for Crutwig. You get the feeling he's going to make a lot of noise in the Missouri Valley Conference this year. Missouri State, the odds on favorite to win that conference this year, though a lot of people believe Loyola will be in it to the very end and could actually be the team that surprises some folks and wins it this year. What we've seen thus far it wouldn't be much of a surprise to us. A very solid team. A zone up here toward it, trying to find a crease. There it is. Kulachov down low. Missed it. Offensive rebound. Gap. Mike, that's one of the ways to be more effective against the zone is don't settle for threes all the time. Get it into the heart of the defense. Inside shots lead to inside rebounds. Pressure here on Cameron Satterwhite. Again, they lost their starting point guard to an ankle injury in the first half. Clayton Custer, he's on the end of the bench with ice on that ankle, unlikely to return. Shot clock down to five. An air ball. Tough possession there for Lyell. Great defense by the Gators. Chioza finds Allen on a step in three. Well, that's that pitch back three we were talking about. Roof would have come off this place, and Allen knocked that one down. Side. Jackson, boy, is he tough down low. Well, they figured it out. When Florida has gone a little bit smaller, Jackson's not going to take him off the bounce. So find a way to post him up and take advantage of his size down low, which is why he's such a tough matchup. Young man who shoots over 67% for his career. I can't remember the last time I saw a number like that. It's not as if they're all layups and dunks either. Yeah, and he, he, he just finds angles, finds ways to scoop it up under the... Opponent 
Not a high flying athlete. Kulichev switches hands midair, but can't get it to drop. Now Krutwick is limping. Loyola can't afford another injury. Three to shoot. That man never out of sync. Andre Jackson, 6'5", 230, and a really crafty player. And he's playing confidence. He went down the end of the court saying, feed me, feed me. But if you're Florida, came on out, you're pushing him away from the post. Well, that's not good enough. I mean, he can score on you eight feet out. You've got to front the post and use your vertical to take away that entry pass if they got off. Jackson with 19, his career high is 25. Allen, beautiful dish, and there's the stuff by Gap. Beautiful feed, getting to the heart of the defense. Bring a defender, spoon feed. Six points for the 6'11 sophomore out of Sydney, Australia. You gotta be so impressed with the wall. I mean, there have been multiple times in this game where it felt like Florida was gonna start to steal the momentum, whether it was through their play or through an injury to their point guard. But they have hung in there and had an answer each time, and Axel Jackson's been a big reason why. Kick out pass sets up an open three. That was all set up by Action Jackson. And Dante Ingram swishes the three. Loyola has led most of this game. Up by six now. Kulichov somehow threads the needle into the corner. And the three rims off for Ballard. Well, they say don't shoot a bad pass, and Ballard's got to learn that. Good job saving the ball, but that's an opportunity to put the ball in the deck. 12 minutes remaining. Gators trying to snap a two-game losing streak. Seven on the shot clock. And foul called as Avery. Not a nice pump fake. He'll go to the free throw line when we come back. But the story so far for Loyola has been Andre Jackson. And that's what makes Jackson so tough to defend. You put a big guy on him, okay, I'll step out, shoot the three, I'm three for three from there. You put a small guy on me, no problem, mouse in the house, I'll go to work down low. And there he is, just killing everybody and anybody that comes across. He came in shooting 67% from the field. He's eight for 10 tonight, so he's actually augmented that mark right now. And that's the tough news for Viola Clayton Custer, another all-conference performer, and really the heart and soul of this team. They're starting point guard out with an ankle injury that he suffered late in the first half. I'm shocked they've been able to keep this lead with Custer going out of the game. And we talked about they were going to have to do it by committee, figure out how they're going to operate their offense. They've done it through Cutwood, they've done it through Jackson, they take care of the basketball. Really nice job and coaching job by Moser. I want to go back to the player we highlighted in the open, and that's Kayvon Allen. I mean, he's not on the floor right now. He's two for seven from the field, and he's got four points. You're a first-team All-SC player. Your team's on the ropes here. When does Kayvon Allen pick it up? Well, Coach White wants his team to play harder, and we just showed the replay. That's not hard enough. That's not tough enough. When you're playing against the other team's best player in the post, that's just not the type of intensity and effort that Coach White wants to see. If that's what you're going to give, you're going to be on the bench. Look at that take. Basket will count. Went in anyway. Would have been a goaltend had it not. Timeout on the floor. 11 and inch to play. Loyola up by six. Playing one like one right now, especially on the defensive end. And as Mike White is searching for answers, how to get this team to click offensively, defensively. He doesn't care who you are. He's just trying to find who's the right file I can put out there and I can trust. And right now, they are one for 12 from three. This is one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. So they have to prove to their coach, we can win a game when we are off on the offensive end. And that's the challenge they have in front of them. A nice take to the basket by the freshman, DeAndre Ballard. Mike, when you're a player, oftentimes in the locker room, the coaches will say, okay, our goal is to hold the team to less than 40% from the field, less than 30% from three. Right now, Loyola is over 50% from the field, over 60% from three. 
So Florida is just flat out not getting it done. If they don't turn Loyola, they're not getting stops. That's how they stayed in this game in the first half was turnovers. But can you get traditional stops in the half court? And the answer is no right now for Florida. And just in case you're wondering, and I know sometimes you see a game this on the schedule in early December, and you say, well, maybe a, a team got caught flat-footed. That, that was not the case. They've lost two in a row coming in. Mike White had a very spirited practice yesterday, a very spirited shoot-around today. This is not a Florida team that took this game for granted at all. Right now, they're just being outplayed. And we've got to give credit to Loyola because this is a very talented team, as you've alluded to, and I don't think it's the Gators sleepwalking so much as it is. They have some weaknesses, and they're playing some opponents who are exposed by them. Avon Allen is back in the game for Florida. We'll see if he can provide a score. See the last win versus a top five opponent for Loyola. December 22nd, 1984 against Illinois. By the way, Loyola of Chicago, the only team in the state of Illinois to ever win a national championship back in 1963. That's a little factoid that I'll admit snuck up on me <laughs> before putting this uh, program microscope. Hayes checks back in. Chioza gets a breather for Florida. 10.47 to go, five-point game. Loyola, I bring Jackson out to the wing. You got to get him the ball with Hayes on him, trying to cover the perimeter. But missing, swing it. Deep three on the way. Missed it short, did it. Bulichoff's been quiet as well. All the Florida shooters that have looked so good for much of this year have been quiet here tonight. How about this for another last two games for the Gators behind the arc? Seven for 37. Hayes left it short. I'm not a math major, but that's less than 20%. And that has nothing to do with their effort. They're getting good looks. I think right now it's just a contagious shooting slump. Did you go through a few of those as a team at Tennessee? Uh, individually, my own last of 12 years or so <laughs> eventually got out of it. That's a block foul called on Kulichov. Yeah, as Krutwick barrels over. It gets the Saturday. We'll have a college hoops doubleheader for you on the SEC Network. Arkansas battling Minnesota at 6.45 Eastern time. And then at 9, it's Missouri taking on Green Bay. Wichoff just picked up his third foul. His team foul number five. Loyola, Loyola has two fouls. So a long ways away from the bonus for the Gators. Now pay attention to this lineup. Florida down five. Jackson, the best player in the game so far, goes to the bench to try to get a breather. Can Florida make a run with the other team's best player on the bench? Correctly. That ball is, was a kick or deflected. It is kick. That's a big difference because with the shot clock being at four, it goes to 20. You're right. I mean, this is a big play. You, you, you can't kick the ball. It's not like he meant to, but gosh, there's been several times they've had the shot clock five or less and just not executed defensively. That's a bailout. Wrap around pass. And a reaching foul on Florida. I believe they got Jalen Hudson. And I think Florida's got to start to look at possibly doing a, a three-quarter front or a full front. They got burned on it once, but that was with Chioza. That's the wrong guy to front. This is a terrific passer, Crutwick. But that starts with Keystone at the top, too. You have to crowd the passer when you know you have a big man that can facilitate the ball. Crutwick running hook shot. No, Keystone secures the rebound, and he's fouled. I don't think Porter Mosher agreed with that goal. Seventh year of the program, Coach Moser, assistant coach under Rick Majerus in St. Louis, where they went to multiple NCAA tournaments. Mike, I've always had a lot of respect for the Rowdy Reptiles. They were original. I, I, I heard one just now that I hadn't heard before. Yes. Hey, ref, check your phone. You have a few missed. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. I haven't heard that one before. Well, they harassed you a couple of times here. Yeah, they're good. That was a nice stop and pop, a silky smooth jumper from Ingram. 
a strong take the other way, and a foul called as Hudson will go to the free throw line. Nice job getting into the lane here, and Hudson, another guy that's been a little bit quiet, gets himself to the free throw line where that's an area where Florida may be able to get some points when things aren't working for you offensively. Try to get to the foul line where really they, they've held Loyola to just five free throw attempts, so they're doing a good job there, but try to get gain that point advantage at the charity strike. Hudson, the former Virginia Tech Hokie, off to a great start this season. Averaging nearly 21 points a game coming into tonight's action. Six point lead for the Ramblers of Loyola. Well, Mike, we talked about the rowdy reptiles, and this place wants to get loud. I mean, other than the various, he's dunked. Somebody on Florida's team needs to take a charge, big block, make a big time play to allow your home court advantage to be in there. Satterwhite. What a pass and play on an alley oop to Crutwick. You know who Crutwick reminds me of? Who's that? You'll, you'll know this now, and I don't know if anybody else will. No. Uh -huh. Recently, Nimi Jurisic for Georgia. Oh, nice. Very talented foreman for Georgia yes. when he was playing with Marcus Thornton. Good feel around the basket. Crutwick looks like an SEC player to me. A little bit thicker maybe than Jurisic, but I'm with you. Well, he's still fresh. He's got some, he's got some time to get the foul out there. <laughs> he hasn't gotten to have too many boot camps yet. You're floored right now. We're coming up on seven minutes left to go in this game. Got time to get a run going or you're in a real danger zone. That'll help. Top floor for the SWAT Wizards. Here's Chioza into the corner. Allen on a three. There he is. We called for Got it. Who's going to make a big play, a block, a charge, something to get this crowd excited and credit Florida with the big time block. Converted with your OSC player. Timeout, Loyola. Gators on a run, a five point game. Nice job by Hayes, and nobody can get it up and down the court quicker than Chioza. Hey, I know you're struggling, but I believe in you. Allen, Trey Ball. Hey, hey man, isn't that your sister over there? He said, My God, they got tons of them. Now, the guy that is the second. Hey, you're the done now. The power on social media. Oh. We, we, we connected on social media today after 11 years. I told him, man, I figured you'd still be in the student section with, with acts like that. But he's graduating. He's got two beautiful little girls. And that's, that's, uh, that's part of the SEC slogan, right? It just means more. It just yes, means more. Right. And we're all just bringing people together here on the SEC <laughs> Network. That's what it's all, all about. Kumbaya as another easy basket. For Loyola, 57-50 now, and 23 points, a game high for Andre Jackson, who's been unstoppable tonight. Tough shot by Chioza, he just threw up a player. Tapped around, offensive rebound, step back is good. Ballard with the left hand. Now they're gonna need the Rowdy Reptiles to pull this one off. Loyola has unflappable, particularly on the offensive end. Towns travels. Turnover on Marcus Towns. The transfer from Fairleigh Dickinson. And Mike, the hardest part of any type of upset, especially on the road, is the close. All game long, you've been playing with house money. You've been playing with nothing to lose, but then all of a sudden you got a lead and it's getting down towards the end. You start tightening up a little bit. Crowd's getting into it. Loyola's gonna have to keep their composure and their decision making on par if they want to pull this off. Florida trying to find a good shot against this zone. Really struggled against the zone of late. Gioza sets up a three. No, body's falling. Whistle down low, and it's going to be against Loyola as Hayes hit the deck for Florida. But that's another instance, Dane, where I'm not sure if that's the best shot you can get against the zone. Yeah, contested shot with Gioza, who's a good shooter. 
And they have the green light, as we mentioned earlier, but you can do better than that. And nice job by Hayes, just, just giving effort down low. And good things can happen to you. And that was a big foul. A third foul on Jackson, by the way. Bullich off, step back, 18 footer. Left it short, Hayes again. Allen steps into a three, he left it short. Another offensive rebound. They were just ice cold. I mean, good looks, wide open, Kulichov, Allen. Two for 16 from three of the Gators, but that'll work. Points in the paint for Jalen Hudson to cut it to three. Inside, there's that man again, Cameron Krutwig. Gators came into this game leading the Southeastern Conference, shooting 3% from downtown tonight, 2 for 16. Kulichov lost it, but a late whistle and a foul on Lucas Williamson. Mike, we talked about leading by example. You're the point guard. You're trying to get half-court stops. You're Chioza. You can't gamble here. This breaks down the entire defense. Now your big man's stuck two on. And yes, you're quick. Yes, you can get steals. But at this point in the game, you're trying to get traditional half-court stops. And Chioza must be a leader defensively with better decisions. Kulachov got it, had it blocked. Five-point game, four and a half minutes to go. Gators trying to avoid. A third consecutive defeat. They played a really good game at the PK-80, but a close loss to Duke in the championship. Got blown out at home a couple weeks ago against Florida State. And now here's Loyola, eight for one on the year, trying to pull off another upset. Unbelievable. I mean, Cameron Krutwig, unorthodox, hard to defend. 14 points, 12 in the second half for Krutwig. Kulichov, nice job creating space inside and getting it. Can't trade baskets anymore if you're Florida. Saturday, that's Crookwood. Seven to shoot. Now it's Ingram. They double him up top, and he missed it short. And Chioza will set it up for Florida, the half court. And they had the mismatch. Chioza on the big man Jackson down low, but what prevented it was pressure on the passer. If they can't get it off, they can't see the mismatch. Forwards off. Back to Chioza with 10 to shoot. Chioza, double team. Finds Hayes, mid-range, no, and a rebound to Iowa. Chioza accepted that. I mean, they, they tried to isolate the screen, but he's got to make the defense earn that. He went straight into three guys, and you get a pick and pop with Hayes. That's not his strength. Hayes guarding Krutwig. Angles the pass in down low. Back to Krutwig, 16. Back iron, and a rebound to Jalen Hudson. I think that's their best post defense. Doubling down and forcing Crutwig to kill you with the outside shot. Allen taking matters into his hands. A strong drive. He'll be at the free throw line when we come back. It's a five-point game in Gainesville. Or, or Jackson. And I thought that last possession was key. They doubled down off of Crutwig and forced him to be an outside shooter. I think that's the recipe moving forward for Florida. Because Loyola, you know where they're going to. They're going to Jackson in the half court. And meanwhile, offensively for Florida, the shooting woes continue. And that hangover from the loss against Florida State has kind of carried over somewhat, at least shooting the basketball. Just 23 of 59, 39% from the field. And 217 from behind the arc. This is a team that was shooting nearly 50% before the Florida State game. They're now down. 43 going into tonight and two for 17 tonight. Kayvon Allen nearly automatic at the free throw line and that one rattles out. He had made 27 consecutive free throws. And Allen 
almost had a steal. Shot clock down to six. Brentwood saying, give me some help, and then throws it off the backboard. Florida clears. Here comes Chioza. And that right there is where the well misses Custer. If you're just joining us, they're without their heart and soul and their point guard, their quarterback. Custer out with the rolled ankle, and it shows in those clock situations. Big possession for Florida, almost a turnover. Chioza takes it all the way. Chioza with the left hand. And that's simply, you don't have your point guard, and do. That's the difference when you have a guy leading the charge at the point guard spot. Nine points for Chioza. The crowd ignites into. Chioza clears. Behind the back. Kick out pass. Hudson on a three. Under a minute to play. Gators down two. Timeout called by the Ramblers. Sixty-one fifty-nine our score with forty-six seconds remaining. Don't forget tonight the SEC now team hesitating or don't shoot it. You got to go with what your identity is, and they are a three-point shooting team offensively. They're just not falling right now, and this is where they'll have to see if they can toughen up. But if I'm Boyola. You know, right now, Kulichov has been a nice matchup here. He's frustrated Jackson down low in the post. So, if anything, I would not bring Kurtwig up. I would try to post him up and see if you can get him on the ball. Big possession here. They go inside. That's a jump ball. And the arrow goes to Florida. And that's why I go with Kurtwig down low, because Florida has proven the past couple possessions that when you throw it into Jackson, they're going to bring the double team. They've made the adjustment. And it paid off. They not only brought a double team, they triple team. That was suffocating defense the moment Jackson caught it. Looked like the entire Florida squad collapsed on him. Maturation process for this Florida team, because going into the game, I'm sure Mike White felt like, I don't know if we're tough enough to get a key stop down the stretch. That was a key stop. Well, let's go back to the conversation you and I just had. We just saw Florida miss a three, and again, Hudson's been terrific all year. But I would imagine Allen, Chioza, they're certainly going to be your first options on this play here, would you not imagine? Well, who's your best penetrators? The guys uh -huh. you just mentioned. Allen, Chioza, do not shoot a three unless it goes inside the paint first, would be my instructions if I was Coach White. Because Allen and Chioza can both get to the rack, get a foul. Two to tie, three to take a lead. Lord has not led it since the 17-minute mark of the second half. Here's Allen on the drive, and there's Allen missing it. And that ball is in the cylinder, waved off. Hayes tapped it up and in. Well, the officiating crew, led by Joe Lindsay, says no, they wave it off. I thought they did exactly as you would want them to attack the glass. They can't stop you from getting in the in. Oh, ever so slightly, Hayes did his best to wait for it to come off the rim, and I'm still not sure. I mean, it's, it's on top of the rim. I yeah. think it's a great call by the officials. We got three looks at it. They did it live. Shot clock is off. And a whistle on a foul. And I believe that is for the seventh foul. That sets up a one in with 15.9 on the clock. On top of everything else, Loyola shoots free throws well. But they got the guy they wanted. They got Satterwhite who's only shooting 56% on the year. The moment he touched the basketball, they immediately went to foul. Yeah, they were going to see if they could get a turnover in the backcourt. You're right, they fouled the right guy and Satterwhite. I mentioned the percentage, but just a sophomore. Doesn't play a ton of minutes. He's had to play more with Custer being out. You talk about some pressure free throws. On the road, top 10 team in the country. Crowd screaming at you. They got that one to go. That didn't look like 56%. Making a two possession game and he knocks it down. Calm, cool, and collected the sophomore out of Gilbert, Arizona. And he was holding back a smile, ice in his veins. Everybody saying you found the right guy. Uh -uh. Clutch. 
Gators need a bucket and they need one fast. Chioza speeding in the front court, spinning, takes it strong, missed it, tapped up, no. And out of bounds, Florida with 8.5 seconds remaining. Mike, I know they haven't been great defensively by any stretch of the imagination, but this team is talented enough. If they hold Loyola to 63 points, they should win the game. Right. They cannot throw it in the ocean right now, whether it's from two points, from three, or from three. 38% from the field, 11% from three. We're under two minutes remaining in this game, so that is a reviewable play. They'll shout the DV Sports system to make sure, indeed, Loyola touched it last. And if you're Florida, you really have to have this call. If it goes against you, it to their game plan to a T without their starting point guard for most of the game. But you, as we mentioned, you need two baskets, not one. There's eight and a half on the clock. What are you drawing up here if you're Mike White? I think you got to try a quick hitter and get a three pointer. I mean, you, you, you other than that, you get the two and then you got to hope that they miss one or two free throws. To me, I think you try to get your three pointer now and see if you can't get Allen snuck off in the corner. Chioza will end it. It There's goes the in the corner. the corner. Just like you called an air ball. Kulichev missed it. Rebound fought for. Jump ball with two and a half, and that is going to do it. Loyola has the arrow. And the Ramblers of the Missouri Valley Conference, without that man, Clayton Custer, the entire second half, are going to pull off an unbelievable upset. Like we've seen all game, not that it was a great look, but not even close for Florida. Just contagious shooting slump right now. How about Loyola? I mean, we thought this would be a good game. And this is this is the game on their schedule. Mm -hmm. And they've gone on the road against a team where you say, man, we're catching Florida at the wrong time. They're going to be ticked off about the loss to Florida State. And all done is hold Florida, a team that was averaging 95 points a game, to 59. And two for 19 from three-point land. And I'll go back to something we talked about at the open. There's one thing you and I can certainly agree on, and that is this about the game of basketball. We can talk about rebounding, we can talk about defense and everything else. It's still a game of shocking. And Loyola came into this game shooting 52% from the field as a team. That was the eighth best mark in the country. That's not on accident through nine games, and they continued that tour of shooting tonight. And I would add to that, it's a game of matchups. And Loyola had mismatches all night long, led by Jackson. Big man put on him, he'd go to work. Small guy put on him, he'd go to work. And I thought Crutwick did an excellent job of playing his version of point guard in the second half. It's going to be a pleasant flight home to Chicago.